growing your business is obviously the goal. And when you're getting more traction, it's super exciting until you hit this point of, oh my gosh, I feel like I never have any more time in the day. Well, truth is sometimes you don't, but something that's so huge to being a business owner and making sure that you are managing your business well is knowing your capacity and your workload. Whether you're a solopreneur or you're planning to take on team members, knowing how long a project takes or different things that you're doing within your business is so important to really planning well and managing your projects. So in today's video, I'm super excited because we're going to go over capacity planning in ClickUp, specifically talking about one of my absolute favorite features, workload view. Hey guys, my name is Christy and I'm the CEO and founder of DeSilva Life and a vetted ClickUp consultant. If you are new around here, I love all things business organization, project management, ClickUp, all the things. It makes my life easier, the lives of our clients so much easier. And when you learn how to maximize ClickUp, it's honestly gonna be life-changing. So I'm so excited to dive into this video to show you how to manage your capacity better with the use of ClickUp and workload view. So in this tutorial, we're gonna go over three different views that are really, really amazing when it comes to managing your capacity in ClickUp or the team's capacity, and then a bonus, my favorite view of all that's not included in these three. Okay, so let's go through it. So here we are in list view. List view is always gonna be required in every single list that you create. Now note, this is just one list called timeline box workload activity. That's what I named it as I was creating this um, at, for tutorial purposes. But note, you can actually create views on space levels. So if I go to tutorials, you'll see that this has different views at the top and then everything levels. So you can do different views on the everything level, space level, folder level, and list level. That's really just a little bit into the hierarchy of ClickUp. You're going to want to make sure that it's pulling in the information you want from where, right? So on the everything level, you're seeing every single thing in your ClickUp and putting filters and different things. We'll get into that last. But then in the tutorials level, do I really need to have different views or am I really never gonna click on the space level, but instead I'm gonna click into the list directly and then want views in that, specific views in that list. So that's just a little lesson on hierarchy. When you add a view, it's going to be added to to that specific place list view, folder view, space view, or everything view. Okay, so now let's dive in. So you'll see I have here a couple different statuses. So let me actually put this one to to do. Um, and uh, so a couple different statuses here. We have our assignees, start date and due dates, and then this other thing here called time estimates. Now, if you're not familiar with time estimates and time tracking, we have in here as well. So let me pull that outside here. So time tracked. So time tracked is obvious, straightforward. It's the amount of time you're tracking against this task that's here. But you also have the ability in ClickUp to create time estimates for a task, whether that's because you're delegating to a team member and you want to say this is how long this task should take, or you are planning your capacity and workload and saying this task typically takes me this long or I think it's gonna take me this long. The cool thing about using both of these is if you have an estimate, you can then track against that task to see if your estimate was correct or if you have to adjust for planning that future task in your workload. So we added time estimates to these because that really comes into play when using these different views. So let's go through box view first. So box view is basically where every single assignee has their own box and you're able to see their workload. So how much time is estimated and how much time is done. So that's if you're using time estimate, right? So you can see this is sorted by time estimate or you're gonna see the workload here. So you can either say time estimate by the number of tasks in that space folder list, etc., or sprint points. That's if you utilize sprints. So I personally like using time estimate. I feel like it gives 
a better idea of the workload because it says, okay, Jeff has six hours on his schedule. Maybe one task takes six hours and Christy has five tasks that take five minutes. I feel like time estimate just gives a better depiction of the actual workload of that person. So if you hear my computer buffering and it sounds like it's a rocket ship, I'm sorry when I've been recording my looms lately and my screen recordings, it does that. So I hope that doesn't bother you. Just real life moment right there. Anyway, okay, so we have workload unassigned Jeff and Christy. We're seeing how much time is not done, done, and then their percentage of tasks. And then you can see what statuses that person, current, that person currently has assigned to them. And then the task and the time estimate and the sprint points would show up here as well for the specific task in that status. So box you, great to be able to break up each person and say, okay, how is their workload looking? Then we have, I'll throw this one in here, calendar view. It's great to see workload and capacity just from seeing what's on the actual calendar. I personally love using calendar view. And again, this is a portion of my favorite view. And on calendar view, you can always also show assignees. And then you can also show time estimates and time tracked on here as well. So then you'll see, okay, this task is one hour, five hours, etc. Okay, so two more in these capacity planning. We then have timeline view. So this is going to default group by none. And basically it's gonna say, okay, this is the timeline if the tasks have due dates, where the timeline of this project is showing the different tasks on the calendar, right? So this is September 12th to 16th, the 20th, the 28th, etc. I personally like grouping this by assignee so then you can see the timeline of everyone's tasks, right? But you can totally decide where you want to group this view. And it's just giving that depiction, right, of the timeline of the task, how this project is flowing. So you can also see the different things that you can show on here as well. You definitely want to show subtasks if they come into play. Um, or if you just want a higher like overview, a higher level overview, you can keep subtasks off. So that's timeline, pretty straightforward. You're seeing the timeline of the task. And then one of my absolute faves is a workload. So this was a view that was dis designed. Again, you can use time estimates, tasks, or sprint points. I personally like time estimates where this is going to, number one, you could set the capacity for each team member. So maybe Christy doesn't work 40 hours a week, but she works 20 instead. Then it's going to shorten her window of how her capacity is filling up. And so essentially what this is doing is saying, let's group this, you group it by one week, two week, or one month. Let's do one month and see what's going on. Here you'll see any team member that has tasks assigned with time estimates, then you can see that their workload is filling up for the day, the week, the month. So this is like a golden view if you use time estimates to actually get a clear picture of your team's capacity. So reminder, you can create this, these views on the everything level and that would pull in all of your team members and say in the entire workspace, here's what their workload is looking like. Where if you just want to look at it on a granular level and say this project, maybe there's this team working on just this project in the next month, let's put a workload view on just that project list and then see what's going on in the project and what everyone's capacity is. So pretty sweet if you ask me. I think this, these are three really, really amazing views to actually tangibly see people's workload. And then one other thing I wanted to show you, which is my favorite view, which is what I call my everything view calendar. So here on the everything level, I created a calendar view and I called it Christie's calendar. Now, if you do this, you can also have the option to make this private. Um, so sharing in permissions and you can make it a private view so that just you see this on your calendar. Um, and so what I did here was I just filtered out that the assignee is me 
I also make sure that I show any subtasks that I'm assigned to as well. So then every day, week, month, I can open up my calendar and look at the different things that I'm assigned to and get a snapshot of what's coming up down the pipeline. Does this day have 15 tasks and maybe I have to move things around? So highly suggest having this. And I also favored it to my favorites bar. So I have this right when I need it. And then I'm able to also come on here and dr drag and drop things. So say I'm working on this thing, I'm like, you know what, I'm not gonna get until the, I'm not gonna get to this until tomorrow. I can drag and drop it onto that next day or next week, etc. So I really love this for capacity planning as well. In regards to the other three views that I showed you, it's not gonna get as granular with like grouping up all the time estimates and actually showing those charts but it really does give you just an idea of what types of things you're working on and if some days have way more tasks than other days. So I hope that was helpful for you. Honestly, three amazing, really four amazing views to help you with planning your capacity and your workload. So I hope that video was helpful for you as you are diving into ClickUp and trying to really maximize it to know your capacity and project your workload. Now, all the templates that I went through in this video are actually available in our system school, along with so many other templates, video tutorials, an entire course just on ClickUp to help you really learn how to maximize your productivity, organize your business, and really be able to grow and scale with ease. I know that's a big promise, but if you really do utilize the tools that you have to organize your business well, that is what's truly possible for you. So if you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel because there's a lot more where that came from. Make sure to drop a comment below to let us know what your favorite part of this video was and if there's anything specific you would love to learn about ClickUp. With that, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.